So, uh, welcome to uh, lecture number 35. In this particular lecture, we will start this modeling and management of groundwater. And under this, uh, we'll cover groundwater simulation models. and ground water management models and particularly for confined aquifer. So, in under this modeling and management of uh, groundwater, uh, it has got two aspects. One is simulation aspect, another one is management aspect. In simulation aspect, we try to see, uh, we try to see the physical processes uh, by using uh, our governing equations that we have derived in our uh, previous lectures. And in management model, uh, we try to see uh, what if kind of scenarios, if uh, we do certain kind of uh, management or we put certain kind of restriction on the groundwater use or uh, restriction on uh, uh, variables, then what will be the situation in near future or uh, in long term aspect. Okay. So, in flow equations uh, uh, under modeling um, that has got uh, two components. One is the temporal component and other two uh, parts are spatial based components. So, in this one, the first one, this epsilon, this is basically porosity. Then we have water saturation and fluid density. So, basically if this uh, combined term, the multiplication of porosity, water saturation, fluid density, this is uh, temporally varying, then we can say that either uh, we can model that uh, density dependent or density independent phenomena. For density independent phenomena, the equation will be slightly modified because it will not be varying with the density aspect. So, other parameters in this equation solid matrix permeability tensor, we have fluid viscosity, this is basically dynamic viscosity of the fluid, then relative permeability and fluid pressure we have fluid mass source. So, in the flow equation, uh, this rho value or this g value, uh, this is having only component in the vertical direction, vertical direction. So, uh, this is basically a modified form of our Darcy's equation. Uh, if we consider it 
with the fluid pressure term. Next word is saturated unsaturated transport model. So, this is basically uh, porosity, uh, water saturation density and this is dissolved mass fraction, dissolved mass fraction then volumetric adsorbate source, other things that is uh, average fluid velocity. Then we have apparent molecular diffusivity and identity tensor and this is dispersion tensor and this is our mass uh, solute mass in source fluid due to production uh, reaction. And this is Q p into C star, this is C star is basically solute concentration of fluid sources. So, our solution methodology is basically solving the basic governing equations. So, what are the basic governing equation uh, we have covered in this particular course? First one is Darcy's law, this is uh, our most fundamental equation that is relates the equation of motion or if we say uh, that is uh, one form of our Navier-Stokes equation if we compare it uh, with fluid mechanics. Then we have equation of continuity, uh, continuity that is uh, mass balance equation and finally, we have uh, solute transport equation or advection dispersion equation. Uh, in advection dispersion equation also we can have other components like uh, adsorption uh, including isotherms or uh, our uh, uh, radioactive decay and these terms uh, will be there uh, to model the whole thing. Now, uh, these three equations are our fundamental equations, these are basically uh, if we consider it in one dimension uh, then it will be mostly uh, uh, if you are considering a steady state case then it will be normal differential equations or ordinary differential equations, but most of the cases uh, it depends on both space and time. So, these equations are basically partial differential equations. Then we need boundary conditions. So, boundary conditions uh, and initial conditions. So, for a particular problem uh, we can have either a uh, initial value problem IVP uh, partial different uh, differential equation IVP or initial value problem. or BVP or boundary value problem or IBVP or initial boundary value problem. So, uh, our equations are mostly in these two forms, uh, in these two forms. So, uh, solution uh, can be obtained for these two equations uh, using either uh, analytical or numerical 
methods. So, uh, to solve these two uh, uh, or solve this equation in form of analytical solution, uh, we need to have some kind of simplified uh, form of the equation. Otherwise, it is difficult to find out the complex uh, the analytical solution for a complex hydrogeological system. Numerical solutions are easier to find out because uh, we generally used a discretized form of the equation and uh, we try to solve it with algebraic equations. So, uh, in case of numerical methods uh, either uh, we can use this finite difference, finite element, finite volume, SPH that is uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics, spectral methods or any mesh free methods uh, for this purpose. So, what is the uh, conceptual form of uh, calibration. So, first we need to have some kind of definition or we should have proper definition of our purpose. What, what is our objective? Uh, whether we want to model the thing or we want to model it for some kind of management strategy. So, we will have some kind of field data and from field data we can create the conceptual uh, model that is conceptualization of the mathematical model. So, we need to identify uh, the governing equations that will be required for a particular problem. So, identification of governing equation, uh, then boundary condition, initial condition. So, next thing is numerical formulation, numerical formulation uh, we can discretize the equation, we can write the computer program, code verification this part is important because uh, we need to have some kind of verification of the code with the existing solutions. So, solutions can be uh, either existing uh, analytical solutions. So, or uh, existing solution for a two dimensional problem, but two dimensional problem or three dimensional problem the problem uh, is that uh, if we start uh, with the reality thing then there will be certain kind of errors. So, it is better to use that analytical solution uh, for code verification. So, if uh, the code is not verified, then uh, we can go back to the computer program and we can uh, try to uh, rectify or correct our errors. So, code selection is important. So, either uh, one can write uh, his or her own code or one can select uh, a proper uh, code which is either a um, open source or a commercial one. So, if code verification is complete or code identification or code selection is complete, then we can uh, go to uh, this model design part. So, with the field data we can uh, design the model, then calibration, calibration comparison with the field data. So, one way uh, model verification is done and calibration is done and this calibration should be supported by the sensitivity analysis. With the sensitivity parameters, uh, with the sensitivity of the parameters there should not be um, uh, much change in the model results. because if uh, we are identifying the parameters in such a way that uh, it is 
uh, not a proper identification for which uh, there will be not much variation, then uh, it will be a problem. So, uh, we, we should have uh, proper identification and uh, sensitivity analysis uh, with our problem and then uh, after model verification we can go for simulation. With simulation also we can rect, uh, correct our sensitivity analysis and final is presentation of the results. If uh, uh, there is some kind of monitoring network then finally, we can monitor the thing and we can correct our uh, assumptions or conceptualization with uh, those monitoring data and uh, again we can start from the initial part and we can conceptualize it the thing and we can redo the whole process. So, that uh, we can correctly adjust the model to get the proper results. So, uh, code selection in this case is an uh, important part of the modeling exercise. Either one can have uh, own code, uh, one can have their own code or they can readily select some codes which are available in public domain. So, standard simulation models that are available in the public domain or uh, uh, with some restriction or in commercial domain, these this is one comprehensive list of those models. So, first model is the mod flow. This is basically three dimensional finite difference based simulation flow simulation model. This is FEM water. This is 3D finite element model for saturated unsaturated flow through uh, porous medium. See what this is uh, saturated uh, uh, ground water modeling or density dependent groundwater modeling in coastal aquifers. Sutra this is saturated unsaturated uh, flow and transport model with this uh, we can model it uh, the groundwater uh, flow and transport uh, in uh, any kind of aquifers. Empty 3 dms this is for uh, contaminant transport with multiple contaminants RT 3D this is a reaction with reaction mod plot is uh, uh, flow path identification uh, thing in ground water. Then sharp this is a two dimensional uh, quasi 3D uh, simulation model for salt water intrusion modeling and this is based on sharp interface. Then HS3 3D this is uh, this includes also uh, that heat transport part other models uh, uh, that can be named here uh, are this hydrotherm fast uh, this also include the chemical reaction part uh, tough to uh, flow through fractures media flotron I tough the inverse tough thing bioplume this is one hydras this is also important software to model the flow in unsaturated porous medium. So, uh, so the identification or selection uh, wise we can select any of these models for our modeling purpose or uh, we can discretize our governing equations and we can use uh, our uh, standard uh, discretization methods to get the solution. 
So, this is uh, the starting of our uh, modeling exercise. So, uh, in modeling and management of groundwater, uh, we have two aspects. Uh, one is uh, the modeling aspect. In modeling aspect, uh, uh, we'll uh, see uh, what is the simulation results and the policy aspect or management aspect, we try to formulate some kind of management strategy. So, for hydraulic management, uh, I am talking about the hydraulic management because uh, if we are talking uh, about the uh, flow part only, then only uh, we say it as hydraulic management. Otherwise, uh, we need to have certain kind of uh, management models with uh, transport mechanism. So, in case of hydraulic management, hydraulic management, we can have uh, equations in the form of embedding technique embedding approach in embedding approach the governing equations are directly discretized and these are used within the uh, optimization model or decision models to get the solution. Next is uh, our uh, linked simulation optimization. Simulation optimization. In linked simulation optimization, uh, the simulation model uh, is directly linked with the optimization model or decision model to get the solution. So, first approach in embedding approach, uh, we generally uh, uh, write the equation in discretized form and we directly use it in the uh, uh, decision models to get the results. But the problem with the embedding approach is that as we are discretizing it uh, for a number of points or a, for a number of grids. So, number of decision variables, number of number of variables that is crucial for this kind of approach. But in case of linked simulation optimization, uh, the simulation model is uh, doing the simulation part separately and only with a limited number of variables we can solve the decision model. So, uh, first approach concern is variable number of variables. The second approach uh, the concern is simulation time. If we are setting up a complex uh, simulation model, then for each simulation it will take significant amount of time and uh, that will be a, a limitation for this linked simulation optimization. Then uh, the third approach uh, which uh, can overcome these two uh, limitations that is called meta model approach. Meta model approach. In this meta model approach, uh, basically uh, meta models are trained 
with the simulation results uh, from original simulation model and uh, we try to minimize the meta model uh, error uh, between the meta model output and the output from original simulation model. So, at the each iteration there will be correction uh, in terms of uh, correction of errors and that can be assessed with certain kind of uh, uh, indicator uh, reference functions. So, in meta model approach the most primitive approach is response matrix. Most primitive approach is this response matrix. So, response matrix approach what is the advantage? Advantage is these are basically linear linear type with the linear type of, of response matrix thing uh, we can easily form some kind of linear model uh, based decision uh, model and we can quickly get the solution. But the problem is that uh, response matrix will uh, always give you some kind of uh, linearized uh, results and one way uh, we are compromising with the uh, uh, accuracy of the simulation model. So, for a complex nonlinear uh, general equations or general problem, uh, we cannot represent it properly with our response matrix approach. So, uh, we need to have certain kind of approach in which uh, we can consider uh, that uh, linear uh, model thing, uh, non-linear model thing. So, nowadays people are using this ANN, SVM, GP based models. So, what are these? ANN is artificial neural network, SVM is support vector machine and GP is genetic programming. These models can uh, consider or can uh, represent the nonlinear behavior of the complex hydrogeological system. So, now uh, we can have the approach where uh, we should be defining our uh, equations, then some optimization uh, methodology and then we should have the solution. So, first part is simulation simulation model, simulation model that is original simulation model or uh, a meta model, then identification of objectives, identification of objectives, constraints, so from simulation model to identification of objectives, constraints, then based on constraints and objectives whether they are linear or non-linear we can find out the optimization. approach slash 
algorithm. So, this is the process where uh, first identification of simulation model, then identification of objectives, constraints, then depending on linear or nonlinear behavior uh, of the objectives or constraints, uh, we can identify the uh, optimization algorithm. So, let us start with the simulation model. So, for uh, as per Darcy's law, we know that uh, Darcy and flux V for any confined aquifer that is for any confined aquifer can be defined as V del H by del L. So, um, this is basically a head loss per unit length, head loss per unit length. So, now with this uh, we can have one finite difference grid So, these are basically nodes. So, black dots are nodes. This is level say j plus 1, this is j, this is j minus 1, this is i itself. So, del x i and let us say that q 3 is entering, then q 2 is leaving, q 4 is leaving and q 1 is entering and this is your del y j. So, basically this is cell to cell water transfer. So, here we can say that this q 1 is basically minus T x i minus j del uh, y j by del x this is 1, this is q 2 is basically T x i j del y j del x second one this is q 3 is minus y i j plus 1 del x i del h by del y third one and the fourth one and the final one is t y i j that is del x i del h by del y 4. 
So, uh, in this case uh, T x j uh, is the transmissivity uh, in the x direction of the element i j. So, and uh, T T i uh, uh, T i j and this is two element i plus 1 j. So, from this point to this point, so in this direction this T x i j that is acting. So, rate at which water stored that is rate at which water is stored that is considered as Q 5. So, S i j where S i j uh, is your storage coefficient this is del y j and this is del h by del t and in addition to that flow rate flow rate q 6 for constant net with draw well, withdrawal or recharge so q6 is basically q i j and t this is varying with t so uh, by continuity uh, a continuity equation may be uh, with the continuity of the flow we can write it as q that is entering q2 that is leaving plus q through q3 that is entering minus q4 that is leaving th the thing and q5 is again that is uh, the rate at which it is stored. So, it is equivalent to the storage plus q 6. So, with this uh, if we uh, replace all these uh, previous expressions for q 1, q 2, q 3 and q 4 we will get this is T x, this is del h by del x 1, this is del h by del x 2, this is del x i and this is T y with this del h by del y, del h by del y and this is del y j. So, s i j del h by del t plus q i j t divided by del x i and del y j. So, for infinitesimally uh, infinitesimal values of del x and del y, we can write the equation as T x del 2 h by del x 2 plus T y del 2 h by del y 2 s del h by del t w. So, uh, if we talk about finite difference thing, then we can write this equation as del h by del 1 and this is basically 
uh, j t and h i j t del x i del h by uh, del x for second phase that is i j t minus i plus 1 j t divided by del x i. So, del h by del y third one or third phase that is i j plus 1 t minus i j t divided by del y j and the last one that is the fourth one is i j t minus h i j minus 1 t del j. So, with this and del h by del t is h i j t minus h i j t minus 1 divided by del t. So, if we uh, substitute these uh, five expressions in our previous equation, then we will get uh, a compact form of the equation in terms of a i j h i j t plus b i j h minus 1 j t plus c i j and h i plus 1 j t plus d i j i j plus 1 t plus e i j h i j minus 1 t plus f i j t equals to 0, where these terms are basically coefficients involving our uh, known values or uh, provided information. So, this can be solved using any uh, standard numerical technique uh, like ADI or alternating direction implicit method, alternating direction implicit method or uh, so uh, this is the form uh, of the discretized equation these can be directly used for embedding purpose. Now, uh, we are concerned about the management model and groundwater management model, there we are concerned about the confined aquifer. So, in case of confined aquifer, let us say that our uh, configuration is like this this is the base or lower portion, then we have in between the impermeable part Q 
one, this is Q3 and this is Q4. So basically this is uh, the aquifer material there. And this is the water height which is H5 at this level and all are having equal del x difference and on the left hand side we have H naught value of the water level. So, it is a bounded problem both cases we have a specified boundary condition. This is also called as Dritchley kind of boundary condition. So, for this kind of equation we have del h by del t uh, del h by del x equals to w by t x where for a steady state condition we have t equals to uh, del h by del t equals to 0. So, for this kind of uh, equation let us discretize it using our normal uh, finite difference method for two uh, second order finite difference will get del x square w i t x. So, this is uh, the discretized form of governing equation and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 uh, pumping from this uh, particular aquifer and this H naught and H 5 bar to water levels on left and right hand side. So, our objective is to maximize. So, first we have completed the simulation part. Now, we are concerned about identification of our objective function. So, objective function is maximization of our uh, total head total head for i uh, for uh, i that belongs to uh, the set of uh, i that is the set of wells set of wells and this is subject to or subject to or st we can write it as this i this w i is greater than w min and h i is greater than equals to 0, w i is greater than equals to 0, again i belongs to that set i. The w min is the minimum total production rate. So, 
rate uh, for the well. So, the total uh, rate should be greater than or equal to the minimum uh, rate that is specified. So, uh, unknown for this problem are uh, unknowns H and W. So, once uh, the model is solved, uh, this can be determined, W can be determined as Q i divided by x i del x s square. So, head objective uh, that thing is for uh, managing uh, the aquifer. So, so, the above formulation one limitation is there that is it considers considers negligible well diameter and negligible uh, well losses. So, for any uh, example problem, uh, we can define the same thing, uh, we can define the same thing uh, using our uh, this particular approach. So, uh, for our uh, original problem, we can write the equation as the maximize z equals to h 1 plus h 2, h 3 and h 4. And this is subject to our finite difference equations and that is minus 2 h 1 plus h 2 minus del x square by t w 1 minus h naught. This is h 1 minus 2 h 2 plus h 3 minus w x square by t w 2 equals to 0, 2 h 3 h 4 minus del x square q 3 0, this is h 3 minus 2 h 4 del x square t w 4, this is minus h 5. So, we have defined our, we have defined our constraints, we have defined our constraints and the final constraint is this one that is there is a minimum value of total pumping uh, in production wells and h i greater than 0 that is i equals to 1 to uh, 4 and w i that is also positive i 4. So, in this model uh, uh, additional constraints we can put that h 4 should be uh, greater than h 5, then h 3 h 4 uh, greater than 0 that means h 2 h 3 greater than 0 and h 1 minus h 2 that is greater than 0 and finally, 
h 1 is uh, greater than uh, or less than h naught. That means, your uh, uh, head on the uh, upstream direction or you can say that where we have a higher head value that cannot exceed or that cannot be a lower one uh, compared to your down gradient value. So, these are the additional constraints that will be required for solving the thing and the full equation as because this is linear in nature we can solve it using LPP. So, this is all about the management of confined aquifers. Okay, thank you.